So if you're guilty of getting all your diet tips from the internet, raise your hand. I do. But while I was researching about this, I came across research from the European Congress on Obesity that concluded that just one in nine popular health and fitness bloggers in the UK was sharing good advice. So to break that down even further, 90% of the time, influencers gave bad advice and actually had no idea what they were talking about when it came to weight loss. So after learning this, I thought it was my duty to come on here and tell you guys the top 10 influencer weight loss tips that don't even work, and some that are even potentially harmful. I'm Mackenzie Smith, and I will be your host on IO for today. Let's just get right into it. So starting off with number 10, we have intermittent fasting. So I want to start the story off with one I think most of you have probably heard of by now, as it's the new big diet trend that has been the talk of the town for influencers with weight loss blogs. Nutritional expert Caitlin Glutz of One Point Nutrition spoke about this trend, saying, One thing that I see everywhere and I wish would stop is intermittent fasting. Not only does it increase your odds of rebound overeating, it can also interrupt your sleep, probably because you're hungry and thinking about food, and decrease your muscle mass. The bottom line here is, if it doesn't feel right, then it probably isn't. And then she continued saying it's much better for most people to focus on things that they can do, like what they're eating and exercising, than what they can't do, like focusing all the times in the day that you can't eat. So I'm a little conflicted on this one because I basically intermittent fast on the daily because I just don't eat before I come to work. So I eat from like 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. most days. And like I feel fine and I feel like I have lost weight, but also my window isn't like all that restrictive. So it's a lot easier for me to stick to. But I think her last point is really solid in the sense that you can try it, but if it feels wrong and you're having negative side effects, you know, just stop because the benefits are probably really like overhyped anyways. If you tried this one, honestly, let me know because I feel like it's really, really Really popular and everyone's doing it. Then in at number nine, we have the keto diet. So the keto diet is another one that's really popular these days and some people have had tons of success with it. But I wanted to come on and make sure you're all understanding some of the big risks associated with the diet. Teresa Shank of Philly Dietitian spoke on the diet saying, one of the biggest trends that I've needed to address with my clients most recently is the keto diet. There are tons of bloggers and Instagram famous individuals that are supporting this diet bad, which I simply cannot get behind. It is way too restrictive and does not support the foundation of what a healthy diet is or should be considered as. A healthy diet incorporates a wide variety of foods that are good for us. Very simply, a diet should be a sustainable way of eating and the keto diet, in my opinion, does not support either of those previous statements. And I completely agree with this. I actually did keto for a while and it felt fine while I was on it and I was full and did lose some weight. But after a while, the fact that I couldn't eat too many vegetables in a day started to really turn me off to it and make me doubt it long term. But I do think this can be a really good like kickstart for anyone wanting to lose some weight. So you should try it, but it just might not be the best thing long term. Next in at number eight, we have gluten being evil. So another thing that I've been seeing like crazy all over social media is gluten free diets. And of course, what I'm about to say does not apply to people with celiac or other gluten sensitivities. But Zoe Feynman of On Point Nutrition gave a good take on the diet saying, whenever I see posts about gluten on social media, there always seems to be some bad connotation surrounding it. Actually, avoiding gluten can cause more harm than good. Usually when people avoid gluten, they typically substitute it with foods that are more processed and full of artificial ingredients. Most people consume gluten from breads, cakes, cookies, etc. And choosing the gluten-free option of these foods still contain higher sugar, fat, and are usually higher in calories than their regular counterparts. Yeah, I think for this one it's good if we limit the bad glutens that we're eating, like bread and desserts and stuff, but just substituting the bread for gluten-free bread really isn't going to do much for you weight loss wise. Slide into number seven, we have healthy desserts. So since we're already talking about desserts, I thought I would continue the convo by debunking the healthy dessert trend. This is one that I see all the time, with vegan and low carb or keto desserts being touted like crazy as a weight loss tool. But dietitian Amy Von Saito Green had this to say on the trend. The various vegan desserts are all over the place right now. And sure, it's great to replace a Snickers bar with a more nutritious option with dates, almond flour, coconut oil, honey, etc. But those baked goods are still going to be very high in sugar and calories. I've seen many clients not being able to reach their weight loss and health goals when adding too many of these types of foods into the mix. Portion size is important as well. A large and luscious dessert may look great in the picture, but I'm guessing that many of these Instagrammers are actually eating smaller portions than what they're posting. And wow, I just love how she added in that last part about influencers definitely eating way less than they seem to be because I think we can all agree that's like 100% true. And yeah, honestly, even I got caught up in these and tried to make super cute Insta-worthy desserts that I think are healthy. But the problem I've learned is that I probably wouldn't have even eaten any dessert at all that night. So I'm just 
adding in a healthy dessert that probably isn't that healthy and it's not helping me lose any weight when I just might have not had anything at all that night. You know what I'm saying? Next in at number six, we have low carb and calorie breakfast. So I think the biggest debate in the weight loss world is probably to breakfast or not to breakfast. So to stay in the middle of the debate, a lot of people promote super low calorie and low carb breakfasts. But some experts are speaking out against this, saying doing this might actually make your weight loss efforts harder. The author of this article put it really well, giving this scenario. You wake up motivated to start the day off right, so you're really good at breakfast and choose a super low calorie option, like an egg white omelet with spinach and an 80 calorie light yogurt or a lone banana. But then when hunger inevitably sets in by 10 a.m., you push through until lunch and make another good choice, like a giant salad. But then it all falls apart at around 3 p.m. when you're raiding the vending machine and forging through your coffee machine's candy jar or like pounding coffee to stifle the hunger. And then by dinner, you're so hungry that you can't even control portions and all you crave is like carby rice or pasta dishes. Even though you just ate a big dinner, you still need something sweet and finish off with dessert. And she continues that all of this is essentially the result of super low blood sugar that's been weighing you down all morning since you started with that low carb breakfast. And she warns that not having any carbs in the morning can be disastrous because that's when your body needs it most and will give you extreme cravings until it gets what it needs, causing you to eat way more calories than if you just added in more protein, some carbs, and some fat. Halfway through at number five, we have cabbage soup diet. So this is another one that I'm guilty of trying. I swear this video should just be titled like a long list of Mackenzie's diet fads. But anyways, this is another one that you're bound to have come across if you search for weight loss solutions online. The diet is supposed to burn tons of calories because the soup is already very low calories and then cabbage is one of those foods that's really hard to digest so your body will burn even more calories by eating it. But according to a diet expert, that's BS. G.U. Stern commented saying, due to the low intake of calories with this diet, the body's own storage of carbohydrates gets tackled, which has a dehydrating effect. Because this diet also lacks protein, muscle mass, and the body gets reduced as well. In short, you end up losing a lot of water and muscle tissue instead of fat. Then she brought up what we all know, that after losing some weight, you'll most likely just put it back on. Not to mention the bloating the cabbage causes, the exhaustion due to lack of essential minerals and vitamins, and the cabbage flavor is just straight up gross in general. In at number four, we got juice cleanses. So again, the juice cleanse. Like you might actually be under a rock if you don't know of this by now. So tons of experts are speaking out about this one, saying it's all nonsense. And it's better for your health to just eat proper nutrition that takes into account your macronutrient and caloric needs than just drinking juices. And this expert also warned again about diet yo-yoing and that it's inevitable to put weight back on after one of these cleanses if you've not changed your diet at all. Then in at number three, we have the baby food diet. So this might be one of the only ones on this list that I haven't tried because when I first read about it, I really wasn't sure how it could create like that much weight loss. So fitness guru Tracy Anderson reportedly first made the baby food diet a thing. And basically instead of eating real wholesome food, you replace breakfast and lunch with 14 jars of baby food, which are mushy and incredibly low in calories and won't give your body all the nutrition that it needs. So yeah, this is just one that will be incredibly gross to partake in and probably won't even give you that much weight loss. In at number two, we have the water fast. So this is one that I'm begging you not to try, but I've seen it a ton on blogs and here on YouTube, so I had to include it. So this diet trend is actually labeled as the worst diet ever and as starvation by experts. And since the diet consists of literally just drinking water for days on end, starvation seems like the right word to me. Given water contains no calories, vitamins, and only very low levels of minerals. When you start the diet, people People report feelings of lightness and euphoria, but these sensations will soon be replaced by feelings of tiredness, hunger, lethargy, and bad concentration. Because of the few minerals and no proteins, essential fats and vitamins are being consumed, and your body's vital organs are forced to go into starvation mode in order to still function. Medical professionals have even gone as far to compare it to conditions like anorexia, with Joanne Labiner, an eating disorder expert, saying, it can be so bad for your organs. That's why people with anorexia can die of a heart attack. Their body feeds on their heart. So yeah, with this diet, it's not worth it in any way, shape, or form. And lastly, we have the keto coffee that's been flying around the internet, bulletproof coffee. So if you don't know what bulletproof coffee is, you basically take your normal black coffee and then put oil and butter in it. And the specific oil here is MCT oil, which stands for medium chain triglycerides, and it comes from coconut oil. But this concoction can come out to about 400 calories, which seems like a pretty dumb idea for someone that's trying to lose weight. Kelly Strogen from Way Nutrition said, bulletproof coffee made with butter and coconut oil contains high levels of potentially harmful fats. 
as the research isn't there to support all the claims for coconut oil, and butter is just probably not good for you. But regardless of that, some people are consuming 400 calories of that thinking it's healthy, without getting any protein, fiber, or beneficial nutrients. It's a recipe for a weight gain. So yeah, this is just one you're getting a shit ton of calories in the morning with not much to show for it. So it's a no brainer for me to skip this one. <laughs> well thank you guys so much for watching, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this, and drop a like down below if you liked the video. And I'll see you guys in the next one.